All right, pleasant good evening to the class of steel. Uh, today is Monday, the 31st of January 2022, the final Monday, the final day in the month of January. Pleasant good evening. We want to welcome Her Excellency Doreen Burunji, our COO, to the class. You're welcome, Your Excellency. Um, thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. Michael Steele. Good evening to all the excellencies in the house and all the members of the class of Steele. Uh, Your Excellency uh, Jenny Steele, our first lady. Chief for protocol uh, minister tonight. I would like to uh, share today, His Excellency is going to speak to us about change your mind. That's our subject tonight. I am excited to learn a lot tonight and I hope that you too are, are excited to, to hearing what he has for us for the next two weeks. So over to your Excellency, Dr. Michael Steele. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency Doreen Burunji. A pleasant good evening um, to everyone. And it is lovely to see you in the class of Steel this evening. I'm very excited about this series that we're going into. The title is Change Your Mind. Change your words, change your mind. And we want to um, acknowledge um, this presentation has been the work of a few, a few weeks by Her Excellency Jeannie Steele, First Lady, and myself as we decided it is time for us to empower those in, in Africa and the global regions with an understanding that has the ability to unlock some doors that were uh, before now closed. So let's jump straight into this evening's session as we start the journey to changing our words. When we looked at putting this session together, changing our mind, changing our words, it was very interesting. I'm going to bring it from a perspective of all the dynamics that encompass words. You know, we live by the word. And, and, and we have sit, seen and heard these things from our Christian teaching. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Come on, I, I want you to walk with me because I'm taking you on a journey. Not a Christian journey, a word journey. Because your words have more power than you really think. And before I say just that your words have more power than you think, your words mean more than you realize. I'll say that again. Your words have more power than you think. But your words have more meanings than you know. Unless, of course, you decide that you go in depth and get a deeper understanding. So let me give you a little bit of history from my own personal background and why I decided to bring this subject. One of the things that from my youth that I had always done, as a matter of fact, I even remember being punished or flogged <laughs> for reading late in the night. And when um, I had this lovely book that I was reading and the lights go off, I would use a spotlight. I don't know how many of you had a passion for reading, but you just kept reading. When I got a, an, um, the age of eight, I, I said to many persons by the age of eight, I had already started reading the Bible a long time prior because I came up in the Sunday school and I loved um, reading from my youth. But added to that, when I got the age of 11, my stepfather and my mom, they purchased a lexicon encyclopedias for us. I had 22 lexicon encyclopedias. I had health books, medical books. And I just had an 
overdrive appetite for reading. And I read all of the encyclopedias. I read them like books. I just read things I didn't know, things I didn't understand. I just read. But being a Christian gave me an even greater passion for reading. The Bible, the word of God, I read the Bible maybe about two or three times. The King James Version, I, I'm one of those persons who stick to versions. So I, I have read the King James Version. And, and the King James Version, it gave me a passion for the Hebrew and the Greek and, and for understanding language and, and, and words. And, and I also read concordances and thesauruses. I just love reading, understanding words. I, I read a lot about prefixes and suffixes and, and root words. And, and they just excite me. I, I get excited about words. A lot of individuals might think what I do is, is easy. And how can I speak and flow so, so eloquently and consistent? But it is based on my vocabulary. I have a huge vocabulary. And anytime I see a new word I don't know, I, I don't feel ignorant at all. As a matter of fact, I want to learn it so that I can add it to my vocabulary. Now, interestingly, I have a little bit of knowledge. I am not proficient in no foreign language, but I have a little bit knowledge of French, of Spanish, Hungarian, German, Chinese, just a little bit. No, 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 no eloquence, no, no competence that I will declare myself proficient in the language. None of that. But I know a little bit enough to excite me and to keep me buzzed. But enough to add to my vocabulary the words and their meanings. Now, this subject and this class that we're going to bring is a combination of myself and the first lady. The first lady has high qualifications in English and she's a student pilot and her English proficiency is level six proficiency. That's the highest proficiency you can have in, in the English language in her studies, level six as a, as a student pilot. And she also has a great passion for words like me. As a matter of fact, her Excellency has said to me that, "Hun, if you and I are no longer together, I don't think there's anybody that would make me as happy because of the ability to communicate. We speak so much. We talk so much on so many subjects. Why am I giving you this lecture today? I want to stimulate a passion in you for language, specifically the English language, because the English language is phenomenal. When you go through this study, you will see and realize why it commands respect globally at a very high level. But also, interestingly, what I will say to you is that the royals have used jargon language to command the empires and bring them to their knees. They come to Africa and they are so proficient and eloquent that they leave you with written words of comfort and solace. And they take your land, your gold, your resources. And when they don't pay you, you look between the pages that were written and you find to your dismay, you cannot do anything to them because it is already written that if they default, you hold them, as it were, blameless. And a lot of our leaders are so excited to see the checks signed and the, and the money in the accounts that they refuse refuse to take thought for the jargon, the language, the words. 
That is why Africa has sold its soul at the pens of the literate or the wise. And what do I have to offer the next generation? What do you have to offer the next generation? Can I tell you what you have? You have the ability to become literate and proficient in the English language. So that when they write you letters or they give you contracts, you say to others, please don't be quick to sign that paper. Let us sit down and decode this document first. How many of you got what I just said? Wave at me because I could see all of your faces. But I want to challenge you. The interesting thing is a lot of you have been exposed to the Bible teaching, the English language. But you have not made wise use of it to some degree in business dealings. So I want to challenge, I stimulate you to look at words differently. Are you ready for this journey? Let's jump in. The mind, thought, language, speech, broken words, spoken words. So part one is going to be the mind. We're going to deal with thought and language, your spoken words. All right. The mind, thought language. It all begins in the mind. Mind. In the Western tradition, the complex of faculties involved in perceiving, remembering, considering, evaluating, and deciding. The mind is in some sense reflected in such occurrences as sensations, perceptions, emotions, memory, desires, various types of reasoning, motives, choices, traits of personality, and the unconscious. It all begins in the mind. If, if I say to you that you are controlled by your environment, you might say to me, that's not true. But I want to show you how you are. Because if you stand up somewhere and it's too cold, you're going to hear a voice in your head saying, I feel cold. Oh, I feel real cold. You didn't say anything. No one is with you. It's just your mind. I cold. And then you are going to look around and your mind is going to tell you or you're going to hear in your head, you should go inside that building and shelter. You hear it in your head. So, so I give you that simple little scenario to say you are controlled by your environment. Guard your thoughts and the words that come in to your head. You're inside of the house and you hear boop. And immediately you're all alone. But you hear in your head, what is that? And you ask yourself, what is that? So words play a really important part in what's going on. You get on the bus and you feel uncomfortable. You start to say, I feel, I don't feel too good. I don't feel good. I feel bad. I feel like I'm going to faint. I feel like I'm going to pass out. All of these words are controlling you. 
and they are controlling you based on your environment and what's going on in your environment. You're not doing it by yourself. You are influenced by words. Words that speak to you, you hear them in your mind, and your body or your actions respond accordingly. Did I, did I remember to turn off the stove? And you get up and you go and check if you don't remember perfectly. Did I finish? Did I finish do what I was going to do? And you go and you look to see words. Why am I always saying to you, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Why? Because I have the answer. Because I know the solution. So basically, I'm going to teach you in this series for the next two weeks how to control your environment and how your environment responds to you based on your preparation. But the first thing I have to teach you is words and language and your mind, and understanding words. How many of you know that advertisements don't have a lot of words on them, but they stimulate you? Use the right words, and the advertisement will suck you in. Use the wrong words, and the advertisement would repulse you. How many of you have seen ads that as soon as you saw the ad, it either stimulate excitement or disgust? The, a picture tells a thousand words. The mind, thought language. Our mind retains, recalls, and communicates through language. One of the languages used by many is English. As a matter of fact, I said to the first lady, oh yeah, we say English language. But the truth of the matter is, when you get into this study that I will show you, English is, it is a language that is made up of languages. You should write that down. English is a language that is made up of languages. That is why it is easy to understand other languages once you know English. It's very easy. And it is easy when you know some languages to learn English. It's very, very easy. It's not difficult. Because the prefixes, the suffix, and the roots are all derived from other languages, specifically German, French, Gaelic, German, French, Gaelic, Greek, Hebrew, and Latin especially, okay? And Latin especially. So as we go through this study, I'm going to show you prefixes and suffixes and roots that are formed from either Greek, Hebrew, Latin, French, Gaelic, of those languages. Okay. And by the way, I, I, I don't, a lot of this is inside of my head, they're not on my notes. Um, but Bear with me as we go through this study. It's a whole lot, but I want to take my time. English is made up of prefixes and suffix from these languages. And the secret is your ability to decode these combinations, to decode them. All right? And I'm going to teach you how to do it. 
and give you the model so you learn to communicate at a totally different level that when you send words, they will be received and they will make a change and individuals will not even understand what is happening based on the control and the command you have of the English language and your ability to communicate. It is estimated that 1.3 billion people speak and communicate with English language. This language is a very coded language. The same word, according to its spelling, can have a number of different meanings. There are words which aren't spelt how they sung, and some words can only be correctly interpreted based on the tone of the speaker. All right? Not that simple. It's not that simple. Many words in English language are made up of word parts called prefixes, suff roots, and suffixes. These word parts have specific meanings that, when added together, can help you determine the meaning of the word as a whole. When added together, and when you decode them, you will determine the meaning of the word as a whole. Okay? So you have a prefix, a suffix, and in the middle, there's a root. And, and sometimes a prefix, the same prefix can be used as a suffix as well. So we'll get into those details. So prefix, what is a prefix? A prefix is when a group of letters having a special meaning appears at the beginning of a word. We call that group of letters a prefix. That's what is a prefix. I want you to understand what are prefixes, all right? What are roots? Word roots are the word from other languages that are the origin of many English words. About 60%, about 60, about 60 percent of all English words have Latin and Greek origins. Please note this. Latin and Greek origins are in the root words for English. Roots give words their fixed meaning, and prefix and suffix can then be attached to the roots to form new words. Suffixes. A group of letters with a special meaning appearing at the end of a word is called a suffix. And I'm just going to give you like six, six um, important suffixes. I'll give you six of them just for you to take notes. And by the way, I hope that in your mind you don't say this is so simple. What is this that we're going through? And I, I hope you you stay with me because where I'm taking you is, is going to build, but you cannot build unless you have a foundation. Are you with me? So you need to have this foundation so you get where I'm taking you because I'm going to, by the end of this, you are going to have such a serious, serious command of understanding how you speak, how to speak, when to speak, when not to speak, and what to say, it is going to change the outcomes you receive. So six most frequently used suffixes that account for 97% of prefix words in the printed English. All right, let's go on. It's not that simple. So let's look at one of these words, destructive. You see a prefix, D, E. You also see a, a root, struct, and if. Destruct, if. And it's pronounced in English destructive. D means to do the opposite of deactivate, 
remove a specified thing from the loose. Okay? So D, anytime you see D, it means do, do the opposite of deactivate. Oh, uh, okay. Struct means build. So you have structures. So struct means build. Structure, structural, all of these, anything to do with struct, it's all about building or adding to. And if, it's a metal French uh, word, I've, from the Latin evus, that performs or tends towards an action, okay? So performs or tends to an action. So you will see I've is a hive. You see, they say as busy as a bee. A bee lives in a hive, and a hive is filled with activity. Are, are you seeing where I'm taking you? So the word I've, is, is based on, on that word towards an action, okay? So you have constructive. It means that you are constructing or building something. You're doing something. It is an action. Intrusive, it means that you're intruding on someone. You're doing something. Conducive, it means that it is working towards something. So anytime you see I-V-E, it, it, it is a word that is leading towards an action. Always remember that. I is an action. You're doing something. All of those words. Now let's look at another word, success. Success, suck, under, beneath, behind, resulting from division. A suck. So it comes from a suck, under, beneath, or from division i don't know if you're from the caribbean like myself or you hear they say when you dig a well you dig a well to a suck have you ever heard that before you dig a well to a suck because a suck pulls out the water into the ocean it, it, it sucks the water so it is from underneath it comes from underneath the well there's a well and it breaks into an environment that you call a suck all right. And cess is from the Latin word to be a motion. To go, to go away, to yield, to give up, or to withdraw. So success speaks of having a grounded foundation. It comes from the bottom, okay? And it goes in motion. It goes into the top. So success is almost like saying from the bottom to the top. Are you with me? So success is an interesting word to look at based on two words. Suck, which it is behind or from beneath or from under. So you're, you're the underdog, but now you're the successor. You, you were, you're the one that was beneath, but now you're the one now that is above. So, so you, you, you recognize this, dev this development of, of the of the word, all right? I'm going to give you another word, mental. It's not here, but I'll, I'll, this one that, that came to my mind, mental. Mental is from the root meaning to think. Men, M-E-N, is, is from the root meaning to think, all right? And tal, T-A-L, is a suffix with a point. So mental means, or mental means thinking with a point. But interestingly, this one is going to be very interesting for you. We are men. And the interesting thing is men means to think. That's the meaning of the word men, to think. And you could, all of this, what I'm sharing with you, if you go into your research and your studies, you, you will see it for yourself. All right. So to think. So I guess somebody that is not thinking, I wouldn't call them a man. Uh, I wouldn't say you are a man. If you're in a group of, of, of males and they're not thinking, I guess they're not men. But let's leave that alone. <laughs> uh, positive. Let's look at another one. I'll give you positive. It's not there, but, I, but it came again. Positive. To put place or set. Pos. P-O-S is to put, place, 
or set it. Okay? So POS, P-O-S. So POS is to put or to place. So let's look at some words. You got positive, but let's look at some other words that use POS as the front word. You have posting. When you post a letter, you put it or you place it inside of a box, the post box, or in the hands of the postman. Are you with me? So post, P-O-S, Anytime you see that, position, if you position something, you put it somewhere, all right? If you have a posture, your posture, your, your posture is how you, uh, your, your posture I'm, I'm sorry, I just had a little bit of a, a, a technical. All right, I'm, I'm back. So your posture is, is how you're positioned, how you're standing. It's a posture, P-O-S, all right? Now, it used to refer to a thing previously mentioned or easily identified or used to identify a person, it. It's a, it's a thing. So pause it. So we have now to put in place or to position it, whatever that it is. And if, again, we see the if again, I-V-E. And remember, we talked about I-V-E is talking about towards an action. So pause it if. Okay, pause it if is to put in place whatever that is in action. So that becomes positive because anything that you are going to be positive about, you're doing something. You're, you're consistent, you're moving, so it's an action. So you cannot be positive unless you are moving or you're doing or it is happening. You can't be positive. Are, are, you, are you with me where I'm going with the breaking down of these words? Because I want you to, to, to observe and go with me. I have a word for you. One more word. Jeannie, I'm going to give them one more word that, that, that has been an a interesting word, a very interesting one that I want to give to you. And you should write this one down. Delight. Write this one down. D E L I G H T. Delight. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. We just looked at destructive, okay? And D means do the opposite of, okay? So you have deactivate. So that's the opposite of activate. Are you with me? Either you activate something or you D, when, when D is the prefix, it is do the opposite of. Ha, ah, y'all ready for this revelation? So delight, delight actually means remove a specific thing from, yes, remove from, so light means provide with light or lightning or to illuminate. So delight means to reduce or remove your light. Let me give it to you what it actually means so you get it. Because you see, when you get this, it's going to change your thinking. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me actually teach you the truth, what it means. I'll teach you. And take this note, if you really want to go to the next level, to see that I'm giving you some real good food. I see Dr. Charles is looking at me with his eyebrows raised. Delight means reduce your luminosity. Reduce your glow. Reduce your authority. Reduce yourself 
in the presence of the Lord. Delight yourself. Don't let your light be so bright and behave as if you are greater or you are it. Delight yourself. When you walk into someone's office, that is the boss, delight yourself. Reduce your light. Don't behave like you are the boss, like you are the authority. Delight yourself, please. I want to, I, I, I find that quite interesting. As a matter of fact, I want to, I, I want to pause this one because that's a, that, that is one that is, is, is really a, a, a buffer when the Holy Spirit revealed it as I was looking at words. Dr. Charles, unmute yourself for me, please. I'm picking on you, Dr. Charles, because give me your take on that word delight as I've just explained it to you, Dr. Yeah, Charles. Uh, as, as you were explaining it, it was going in. And I discovered that what that delight means is humble yourself. That is correct. That's mm. what it means. It does not mean be happy and laugh and be jovial and be woohoo. No, 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 no. It actually means humble yourself. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he will give you the desire of your heart. He's not going to give you those desires when you're arrogant and puffed up and, and bigger than anybody else. No. It is when you reduce your light and he sees you are humble, then you receive elevation. All right. So let me go back into going with you because I hope you're starting to, to recognize that I might be going slow and long-winded, but I'm making a little bit of sense in what I'm sharing with us. So success, as we mentioned, is coming from the bottom and reaching to the top. A lot of people think that success is you're up here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be. No, success is a process. It's a working. It's a work in motion. And it is a continued action that is taking place. All right. Be mindful of your words. They say that words have power. Words have the power to destroy, not or, and create. Words have the power to cut and empower. Words have the power to whatever you choose to put there, words can do. Whatever you choose to put there. When most of us ponder on the statement we think about the words, that come out of our mouths and what enters our ears. We often don't consider the power of words as it relates to our mind and our thoughts. We don't consider it. Sometimes you, you, you watch TV and movies and, and they say things. And, and those things that are spoken in, in, in the movies or, or something, you, you don't believe that they, they, they will have any impact on us sometimes. How many of you sometimes you, you go to sleep with the t television on and there are words going into your airways? You, you don't even recognize that those words are building a foundation for recall times. They're building a foundation in your head. I, I read so many books and I got so many things inside of me by putting them on a recorder and going to sleep with them. I'll teach you another secret. You want to read a book and get it really good? Put it in your headphones and let the book be read into you. And listen while it is being read. And even if you fall asleep, your subconscious is still recording. Remember, hearing is different than hearing because you're listening. I'm going to say that again. Hearing is different than hearing because you are listening. Every single song 
that is around, if I put you to sit down and ask you, did you hear that? It was nothing to do with the congregation, the conversation, nothing to do with what we were discussing, but I'm going to assure you, you heard it. Why? Because hearing has absolutely nothing to do with your input. Did, did you get what I'm saying? Did you get that? Hearing does not need you to be taking place. Hearing happens by default. Faith comes through hearing and hearing by the word. Fear comes through hearing, but wait a minute. Hearing what? So if you're walking through the jungle or the forest and you hear a song that sounds like something is running through the bush, what's going to happen? Fear. Immediately. <gasps> because in your, in your spirit, what you hear is computed and translated into actions that need to be taken without your input, without your participation. Um, I'm talking to us. A lot of, a lot of African parents sell their children's thing, things in anger because they want them to move and they don't realize they're stunting the child's growth, they're cursing the child, they're blocking the child's future and they're putting foundation principles and thoughts inside of that child that when that child or that individual is in a different environment, it affects them badly and they cannot get it out of them because two things happen. The situation that the person was in, the voice that you use, the tone that you use, the seriousness that you use, the fear that it brought will never depart from the child unless the child receives counseling and understanding of how to get rid of word curses have you heard me and a lot of us including myself i'm gonna say it a lot of us including myself are still battling with words and statements that are so hard to just get out of the database that's why it's a constant work in motion to renew in your mind. It's a constant work to renew in your thoughts. It's a constant work to get rid of negative people, to get rid of people that make some statements all the time and it gets overbearing on your psyche. Be mindful of your use of words. Be mindful. In the class of steel, you guys are going to be so powerful. I mean, as soon as they hear of me, just say it. Just say it in your spirit. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Just, just, just feel that. I mean, feel that. F feel what it feels like that when you show up for an interview, you know, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. You know it. You're confident in it. Come on. When you go to a meeting and you're going to share and teach, as soon as they hear of you, they're going to obey you. The strangers, those that don't even know you, are going to submit themselves to you. Just, 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 just dwell on that a moment. Let that soak into your spirit. I want to tell you something that the first lady gives to me every single day, every single day. I mean, it is so much a part of me that I don't even bother about other things. Every day, the first lady says, darling, you will never be made ashamed, not one day in your life, not a day in your life. And no matter what happens, that word haunts me <laughs> you need some words that are gonna haunt you you will never be made ashamed <laughs> you will never never be made ashamed no matter how bad it looks no matter what 
individuals might think about you in the scenario. You will never be made ashamed. You will always come out on top. <laughs> Those words send shivers down my spine. What words send shivers down your spine? As soon as they hear of me. I see Doreen smile when, when she hears that. As soon as they hear of me. I, I see Architect Olukoya smiling because Architect Olukoya is saying, my mentor tell me that as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Why? Because I have the answer. I have the solution. I, I make things happen. Without me, I'm not going to say that, but I make things happen when I'm around. All right. So, so look at some of the things that are in you and, and look at those things that you need to get rid of and decide, I need to change this. I need to change what I say to my staff. I need to change how I motivate my staff. Do I motivate my staff by debasing them, by criminalizing them, by stupefying them? How do I motivate my staff? How do I motivate my team? How do I motivate myself? How many individuals say to themselves, I am an idiot. I'm so stupid, so foolish. Hey, no, no, I'm not. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I, I need to get it right. Oh, I need to change my strategy. Choose the words you use. Fight hard. And choose the words you use. Because the words you use are going to empower you or, or cause you to curse yourself. It is not a coincidence that we learn spelling. I'm going to talk to you about this one. Get ready. Revelation is coming. Get ready to take notes. Revelation is coming. It is not a coincidence that we learn spelling in school. In school, the subject spelling include lessons of learning to spell, read, and recite words. I'm going to go on. The definition from Oxford languages Spelling is the process or activity of writing or naming the letters of a word. Can I talk to y'all, please? Wave at me if I can talk to you, please. Just wave at me. I want to know I have your attention. I need your attention. Listen to me. One of the reasons why they... Mm. Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. One of the reasons why they want to have you learning to read and to spell is because they teach you what they want you to learn. I'm going to say it again. One of the reasons why they teach you how to read and to spell is because they teach you what they want you to learn. However, however, if you do not study further and you do not increase your knowledge, you will just know how to follow their commands. Are you with me? You will just understand enough to be a gopher, or a go fetch, or a go do, or a this is what I mean. 
but the finer details of decoding what was said to you will leave you bamboozled. I, have ple I take pleasure in reading long, long, long documents and decoding them. As you've seen, I, I told you that we made application for special consultative status with the ECOSOC. That took reading a lot and studying and understanding and putting it together the right way. When I applied for my charity in 1999 in Barbados, somebody said to me, you're not going to get your charity. And I said, but why? This is, oh, you need a lawyer, or you need this, or you need that. And I was thinking, hmm, I know what I want to say. Why do I need a lawyer to say what I want to say? Come on, somebody. I want you to think with me. I really want to challenge you. I want to stimulate you to want to read. I want, I want you guys to be just, just going and reading fine print and, and, and understanding what it says. I want you guys that when they tell you, sign here, you're not in a hurry to sign. You read what they're trying to tell you and they might say, you're wasting time. But by the time you finish reading it, you want them to go and review it. No, please review this. You need to review this or amend this because this is in your favor, not mine. This is in your favor, not my favor. And I don't agree to this. That's why they want you to sign it. But I want you to be stimulated. So spelling is interesting. How many of you have ever heard about casting spells? <laughs> Come on, casting spells. Being a, being a reverend, you go into many studies. You study many areas of religion, culture, language. And then be, be, becoming a bishop at, at the doctorate level, you, you have to... You have to be able to exercise a level of proficiency in communicating because it comes with an authority and power that if given to the wrong individuals, it can be problematic. But how many of you have heard of casting spells? And it seems so witchcraft. It seems so evil. But casting spells is not evil or positive or negative. It, it is not a positive or negative casting spells. It is what it is. Have you ever heard that before? It is what it is. I remember a person at a very high level in an organization having a battle with me as a Christian. And I said to this individual, you don't want to have a battle with me. As a matter of fact, not a battle of words. Don't have a battle of words with me. It's not going to work. I'm not one of those persons who allows my mind to be bamboozled by words easily. Because when individuals are casting spells, it's simple. They just tell you something and you believe it. And you can't get it out of your head. That's casting a spell. They put a few words together. They tell you something and you don't understand it or you understand it and it hurts you. It wounds you and you find it haunts you because of the influence that person has on you casting spells. Nobody has an influence on me like that. I can blank. His Excellency Doctor, yours will tell you, I can blank somebody from my mind so easy that I even forget their name. <laughs> I don't even remember their name when the conversation comes up. <laughs> Come on. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? Are you all with me? You have to know 
how to guard your mind from spells. From persons that are going to send curses based on what they say to you. So when you recite things over and over and over and over and over, they, they leave an impression on you. Some of us have been taught some simple, simple nursery rhymes that never leave us. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke. Some of us hear these things. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Mary, yeah, we're from totally different countries. But we have things that we were taught at primary school and we still remember them today. Why? Because spells were cast and we held them. And if you got a chance to study some If you got the chance to study some books that we're going to give to you in our library and you see some things, your eyes will open because you would say, I was reciting that. I was casting spells. Let's move on. The definition from Oxford languages, spelling is the process or activity of writing or naming the letters of a word. I'm going to go on because I don't want to belabor the point. Being mindful of your use of words. Spelling can also refer to the casting of spells. You can cast negative spells when you repeat or recite negative words. Your use of negative words help to create negative thoughts, feelings, and energy within you, thereby creating negative outcomes. Okay. I'm going to teach you a little bit of witchcraft. I'm going to teach you a little bit of witchcraft. And the reason why I'm going to teach you a little bit of witchcraft in this class is because I want you to understand spells. Okay? That's the reason. Not because I want to teach you sorcery. No. But I want you to understand what people do so that when you see these uncircumcised Philistines trying to behave as though they're giants, you would recognize their peony grasshoppers. And you will walk away laughing and you will send them into confusion. I'm not going to repeat that. You should listen to the video when you get the chance. I repeat it and listen to it for yourself. I'm going to teach you a little bit about casting spells. First thing, first thing that is necessary is your mind. Write that down. First thing that is necessary to, for a spell to be cast is your mind. That's the first thing. The most important thing is spell is not mixed inside of a calabash. A spell is mixed in your mind. Did you get that? A spell is not mixed in a calabash. A spell is mixed in your mind. It's the first thing. The second thing. A spell is, is mixed with your interpretation now how do you get an interpretation because someone is going to tell you the outcome ain't that funny ain't that funny the person that is casting the spell is going to tell you the outcome the second thing is your interpretation or your confidence. How do you get confidence? Because somebody says to you, that man did this, or that woman did this. 
and they convince you. You have testimonies, you have stories, you have backlog of information that can bamboozle you into realizing this person is a serious witchcraft worker or warlord or wizard. Are you with me? And the final ingredient is your participation. All of these tenants working together and you are doomed. And it gets better. It gets better. If you continue to repeat what you were told to repeat in your mind, in your thinking, or you continue to focus on it or have conversations about it, you will make it happen. It's like that, simple. You will create it yourself. And as a matter of fact, the powerful person was not the person that cast the spell. The powerful person was actually you. Oh, you missed what I just said. <laughs> you missed what I just said. I, I really want you to get it. If somebody is trying to do something to you using sorcery, you believe, you agree, you testify, you confess, you're afraid, and it happens, the powerful person was not the person that sent the suggestion. The powerful person is your mind. Oh, come on. D d let, me, let, me, let me remove my screen. I, I, wanna, I, want, I want you to see me. I want you to see me because I'm, I'm teaching this class for the next couple of weeks because I want you to get it. I want you to understand the power of your mind. And I want you to understand the power of words and suggestions. Reading good books. Educating yourself. Enlightening yourself. S somebody met me in my... My, my walk in, 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 Christian, in Christendom and they keep, they, they, they keep saying, me, oh, you need to read the book of Job. You need to study the book. Listen to me. Listen to me. No pastor, no bishop, no mentor, nobody instructs me on what passages of scripture to read based on their perception of me. I'm not a Joseph. I'm not a Job. If you study Job long enough, if you study the, 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 the dynamics of his life and you look at the horrors of his life and you look at how it happened and why it happened and you learn so much about Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, and you, 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 you are so far from the truth you don't even know. Because you were creating a Jobic situation for yourself. So you become jobative. Everything, you're jobative, jobative, jobative. I'm playing with the English language because of my knowledge. You're jobative, very jobative. So I want to challenge some of you. Stop reading some of the scriptures you're reading. Let me tell it to you and spell it out to you so you get it. Stop reading some of the things you're reading in the scriptures. Because if you focus on those things, you'll get the results. It's obvious. You're focusing on it. It's a divide and conquer principle. Some are going to be Josephs. Some are going to be Jobs. Some are going to be Elijahs as the prophets. And we're going to tell them what happens to Elijah. And it's going to be okay for it to happen because he's an Elijah. It's going to be okay for this to happen because he's a Jeremiah. I am not an Ezekiel, Jeremiah, or I am a Michael Steele. Oh, but your ministry is just like a, you, you, you got to be a, no, I, no, I'm Michael Steele. Sorry. I'm Michael Steele. Who are you? Don't, don't label me. My mom has already labeled me with a name, Michael. And I know what Michael means. Who is like God? 
That's what my mom named me. Some of you are so caught up into prophecy and into delaying, delaying, delaying of, of, of what you want to accomplish in life. And you let people cast spells over you. And you appreciate it. And you go home and you study it. You read it. And all of a sudden, you know what to expect. You know who you are. You understand who you are. Come on. I don't even know who I am. If God had ever given me a revelation of the troubles and the difficulties that I would have to come through as an individual, I wouldn't even decide to take this journey. So why am I going to let a person tell me, read the book of Job. I see what is happening to you. You're like Job. No. Nobody's casting no spell on me. And letting me go home and study the spell and know what the portion is like. And then, and then they say to you, guess what? Are you ready for this word? Come on, somebody. Are you ready for this word? That is your portion. So you put it inside of the calabash and mix it. You know what the calabash is? What I just told you? It's your mind. Wave at me if you get what I just said. That's your potion. So you put it inside of the calabash and mix it. Mix it with your faith. Mix it with your understanding. Mix it with your belief. And if you believe you're like Job, I promise you, you will suffer. If you believe you've got to be like Hannah and praying and crying at the altar for God to deliver you, I promise you, you will be spellbound as somebody said. They're casting spells on you. And that's what a lot of ministers do. The difference between those spells and the other spells is this. You can cast spells and cause people to get up, rise up, and be successful. You can cause, cast spells and cause people to reach to the next level. You can change the destiny that others might have had. Of course you can. By casting spells. Are you a spellcaster for your government? <laughs> I'm meddling with you. Are you a spellcaster when you write a letter to your politician and plant a seed in his head? I'm messing with you. I'm teaching you war. Are you a spellcaster when you write that note to your wife or to your son and tell him who he is, how powerful he is, how awesome and amazing he is? Are you a spellcaster? Are you a spellcaster when you speak to those that are under you and you tell them they're going to be successful? Every person in the class of steel is going to be awesome. What type of spells are you casting? I am challenging you. His Excellency Dr. Ewers and I have some deep conversations and Your Excellency Dr. Ewers, please unmute yourself. Let me bring you in on this because this is a, this is a, a two week session that we're gonna go into and I want to strengthen and empower you in these lectures. And I want you to take notes and I want you to think on them and ponder them. Don't just, don't just let these spells be cast and you didn't get them. Your Excellency, Dr. Ewers, how do we deal with people that, that are opposed to us and they disrespect us and they dishonor us and they wish us evil? Your Excellency, Dr. Ewers, how do we deal with them? So you open, can I use the English language like a can of worms? This is a very wide this is a very deep, this is a very high mountain. And one of the things I would like, and uh, the, the terminology that you're using about casting, 
and so on. One of the biggest ones that people don't know to release on themselves is unforgiveness, to let go. What kind of spell do you cast when to unforgive? You, Michael, still has hurt me. And because you have hurt me and because you have said something to offend me, what did come out of my mouth? What am I going to say about you? Isn't that casting? Am I going to say something negative? Am I going to say something positive? Because you hurt my feelings, I am going to say something negative. That negativity is going to come out as casting. Somebody will say, they, oh, Michael Steele, who does he think he is? He has this terminology to say um, it's a hundred uh, it's a hundred year uh, vision. I give him five years. I give him five months. Isn't that casting? And a lot of the things that we use, um, for example, as you talk about that and negativity, and I think most of us who is coming from our faith base, when you do get saved and accept Christ as your person, some people say they give you three months, some say six months. So you, you might hold on for a year. Isn't that casting? I answer your question, sir. What we do, we always smile. We always look at them. And sometimes silence is the best option. You're very good on that. <laughs> You're very good at that one. You don't say nothing. You say nothing. They will say, I'm from, uh, uh, I'm from uh, what the country call, I, I don't understand, I don't speak English. So you say nothing. So that's what you tend to do. And I observe. When they say what kind of negativity and casting, if we put it over in that terminology, you're from Macedonia, you say nothing. So, sir, I ask you questions, sir. You say nothing, so, and that's how you address it. So, in other words, you don't answer until you hear from me. <laughs> and if you haven't heard from me, Your Excellency, just say, his excellency has not spoken as yet, so I cannot tell you what is in his mind because he hasn't spoken as yet. I have to wait until he says something to me. Is that correct, your excellency? <laughs> the reason why I have learned that in a private class, in a private class, I'm going to tell you some things that I have done, and when I look back at those things that I did based on casting spells, they taught me the power of the tongue is dangerous. Somebody asked me, why, why have you been divorced and remarried and I'll tell you a little secret because from my youth, I learned the power of the tongue. And if you want peace, sometimes the best thing to do is hold your peace and let people go their way. And after they're gone, bury the memories. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes, the best thing you can do is hold your peace and let people go their way. And after they are gone, bury the memories. There are two things that happen in every single situation in life. Either you learn or you learn. Those are the only two things that happen. Nothing else happens. Nothing else happens in relationships you get involved with. Two single things. Either you learn or you learn. What do I mean by that? Either you learn who to follow, who to trust, who to listen to, or you learn who to never give an audience with your ears and your mind too. You learn or you learn. Either you learn who to entertain or you learn who not to have an audience with. You're always learning. 
lifelong learning. Don't ever put the negative with the positive. It's almost like somebody asks in the scriptures, you get it said so easily. Can a fountain give both sweet water and bitter water? No, it cannot. It's unfortunate that the fountain analogy is not perfect for human analogy because we can both be gentle, but we can also step to the other side of gentleness. Let me go on and bring this one to a close because you see we are going somewhere. You can cast negative spells when you repeat or recite negative words. Your use of negative words help to create negative thoughts, feelings, and energy with, within you, thereby creating negative outcomes. Energy. You know, you hear some older folks saying, I don't have no energy for you. Have you heard that before? No energy. Have you ever had conversations with persons that make you so tired and wore you out? I guess some people might say talking to you does that sometimes. Listening to you sometimes wear me out. Because there's so much information and the ability to process information is limited. And there are so many things that are going through your mind while you're trying to decipher what is being said that it can become complicated and overwhelming, and the mind gets overload. You know what is the best time to question someone? When they're tired. Because they will tell you things just to get you out of their way so they can rest. A spell is intended to communicate something that is not directly expressed. What is meant by a word, text, concept, or, or an action uh, denoting a verbal action, an instance of this as a result? When you're casting a spell, you don't express something. You just know what the outcome is going to be, and you say something, and, and the person just picks it up. I'm going to give you one last slide for today because I see you're tired and there's so much that you have taken. So I'm going to give you the last slide for today. And this one is interesting. Renew one. Positive language versus negative language. Fix. Ready, let's go. One, two, three, fix. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. In the midst of fixing your problems, in the midst of fixing a car, in the midst of fixing something, I want you to look at, at this word here and I want you to tell me what is the most powerful word in the word fix. I'm just going to ask you the most powerful word in the word fix. Your Excellency Zionist of Macro, what is the most powerful word in the word fix? Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening, Your Excellency Zionist of Macro. How are you? I am blessed. Thank you. Wait, Thank wait, you. sorry. Before, oh, go, go on. Go ahead. What is the most powerful word in the word fix? Your Excellency, you caught me off guard and I need to, I need some clarity. Um, when you say the most powerful word, you mean of the letters fix or fix as a whole? Yeah, the, the letters, the letters, F, the letters, the letters of the word, the letters. There's a powerful word in there. I mean, this word I is I will so go powerful. for number two. 
No, no, no. The, a powerful word. No, a word. A powerful word. F I X. What's the most powerful word? Say it. Say the word. What is the word? They mean fix. Yes. What's what's the most powerful word that you can make out of the word fix? Um most powerful word I can make out of the word fix. Fixish. Um no, 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 no. You just the three letters. You just have three letters. What other words can you see? Um, three, must it be three letters out of three no, no, letters? No, it could be. It could be two letter words. Two letters are fine. Upon. Say upon. again. Fix upon. Fix on. No, 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 no. I want you to use the letters there. These are the letters you see. You know, you're using. It's like if you use, um apple and 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 the word a p e is is from the word apple a p p l e you have a a a p and a e um or you have a, you, you you see what i'm saying so there are three let the three letters there that i want to know what's the most powerful word that you can make out of those three letters well, what's the most powerful words i can make um I see. Okay. Go ahead, Your Excellency. I'm challenging you. Don't worry. It's not a. It's not a. You have to get it kind of thing. But I just want to to see your thinking. That's all. I'm challenging everybody. Okay. But my thinking. So you would like me to make words out of those three letters? Yes, one word. One, one powerful word. word that you see there. So. International, I would like to go for number two, international. Oh, okay. I think I'm, let me, what, I think you're not seeing exactly what I'm bringing to the table. Let me challenge, <laughs> I want to challenge Dr. Charles uh, and see. I'm just using the three words, the F, the I, the X, the, just those three letters. And I want to know what word is in those three letters. Let me, let me check to Dr. Charles. Dr. Charles? Go ahead. Give me a, uh, the, the most powerful word that you see. Go, which is in the X. Oh. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. I see what my wife has done. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I am sorry. Let me apologize to Zionist. Zionist, I apologize to you. No. Because the reason why I apologize to you is I see where you guys are, are, are going. And, and it's all right. I'm just using the letters F, I, and X um, are the three letters. Nothing else. Not one, two, three already. Let's go. None of those. Okay. I'm just okay. using the three Fix letters. Is, is F, I, X are the three letters. And I just want a word that you can make out of F, I, X or the words that you can make out of F, I, X. I'm sorry. Okay. Repair. No. Okay. Let me leave it alone. I'm going to just go, just jump into it. It's okay. okay. In FIX, there, 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 there are two words that are very, very, very powerful. Is if. You can make if. I-F. You, you, you see what I'm, what I'm saying? There are three letters. You can make if. I-F. If. The next most powerful word in there is very interesting. If I, I all by itself is a word. Did, did you know that I was a word? In the English dictionary, I is a word. The smallest, the smallest word in the dictionary is I. Did you know that? I challenged you. I is the smallest word in the dictionary. But watch this. But watch this. The word fix has a doingness in it. But fix includes in the center of every fixing is I. In the center of every fixing is I. Fix my mind. I. You want to solve a problem you have with somebody and you want to fix it? Look at yourself. 
You want to make something happen that is not happening? Look at yourself to fix it. Zionists have been working very hard doing a whole lot of fixing recently. And, and, and you have to be mindful that you play the most important part in fixing yourself. I cannot fix you. You have to fix yourself. I cannot fix your mind. I can only give you tools to fix it. I can only give you suggestions to fix it. You are the person that's going to do all the work because there are some words that have been spoken over you, to you, at you, about you. And the only person that can fix it is you by yourself. This evening's session has been challenging to present because I find that I, I did a lot more explaining and a lot more teaching. But I want to say this to us. In summarizing all of this, number one, develop an appetite for reading and understanding words. Look at the root meanings. Learn to look at prefixes and suffixes and roots. Learn to look at them. So your vocabulary becomes more extensive. So, so that, that you create a dynamic where your eloquence is, is um, it becomes phenomenal. When persons hear you speak, they want to listen. And the reason is because your vocabulary is almost inexhaustible. That's the first thing I want you to get from the first session of this evening. Start reading more. Start having a love for words and language and communication. Start having a love for it. One of the things that have destroyed a lot of individuals is when they are in a place where they don't understand, they go silent. When they don't understand. Don't go silent when you don't understand, please. There is no, there is no ignorance or there is no stupidity or there is nothing when it comes to growing in knowledge and understanding. It is a process that we all go through. And all of us are at different stages in our lives of understanding. Don't be intimidated. I discovered when I was in, in Nigeria that there's something smart that they do to Africans. I'll tell you a little secret. They send you manuals for cars and they don't send them in English. There are lots of persons that are trying to do mechanic work and the, the language is not English. And the mechanics are just looking at the, 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 the pictures and assuming what it means and they don't have a clue what's going on. And I have seen some crazy things happening that I ask myself the question, oh my God, how do these people qualify as mechanics when they can't even read what they're looking at? Uh, are you getting what I'm trying to say? And I'm using a simple scenario to challenge us to raise our level of understanding of language. The second thing that I want us to grasp is what have we heard that we are still repeating, regurgitating, re re reliving on a continued basis. Let me tell you what that is. 
that is the curse or the blessing you are living under. Or should I use the term, those are the curses or the blessings that you are living under, unfortunately. Those things that you have heard and they affect you. Every time they come up, they hurt you. They wound you. They bring back the same feeling. Why? Because that spell that was cast on you, you are carrying it and you do not know how to get rid of it. In my mentoring, I teach people how to get rid of curses and spells. It's a long-winded process. And the same time it took to get it, it will take sometimes to get rid of it. But you have to get rid of it if you want to get to the next level. The third thing that I want us to take from this session is any fixing that is going to happen with your mind, it is going to have to be you. You can get tools from books. You can get tools from pictures you watch. You can get tools from mentors. You can get tools from people you have conversations with. But in the middle of the fixing, you are the key component that is needed to fix your problem or to fix you. One of the things that religion has done to us is religion has said to us, I can lay hands and make a change. You can. Of course, laying hands make a change. But it depends on you. Receiving that person, appreciating that person, but greater than anything else, appreciating you need to get rid of this problem. Or this solution is one that's going to work for you. I'm His Excellency Dr. Michael Steele. Thank you for listening to this first session on changing your words, changing your mind so that you can become a more powerful person in the next journey that you undertake. We're going to pick up from positive language versus negative language on Wednesday. Thank you so very much for listening. And if anybody wants to make a comment, please say you would like to make a comment. Or if not, then we're, we're, we're good with this lecture. But if there are any comments, just wave your hand at me. I can see you. I see Dr. Charles waving his hands already. Dr. Charles, the time is now 8.51. I don't want to go on too long. Just make your comment, submission or observation. And let's jump forward. Yeah. Yeah, sir. My comment is in casting spell. And from the explanation you give, it is not every spell that is witchcraft. Let me say this. Wait, before you go, before you go, so you, you're agreeing with me that I'm saying Cass's spell is not good or bad. You, you're basically saying you're agreeing with me. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Exactly. That's what I'm so, saying. So the first about. thing I want you to say is I agree with you that Every as you have said, cast every because somebody hearing you alone might think that I said that every cast or spell is witchcraft. No, so I want you no, to no. confirm you agree with me, please. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Casting spell, not every casting spell is a witchcraft, and another word for casting spell is beguilement. Beguilement. So. Let's see this. I am not training you to be me, but to be 
the best of you. This is never witchcraft. It's a good one. But I am cast, I am training you to be exactly me. That's a curse. That you can never go above me. That's a curse. That is witchcraft, which means I have put you on limitation. So I think this is the, 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 the most important thing I take in this. That casting spell could be witchcraft depending on the motive of the person. If the person meant to develop you, to be you, it is not witchcraft. But if he means to sit upon you so that nobody will, will be like him, that the best you can do is to be like Dr. Charles, not to get above him. That is witchcraft. Thank you, sir. Dr. Charles, I, I appreciate you for your observation. I'll share something with you. Mm. I have a personal friend, quite a few personal friends, but one is a multi-billionaire times over multi-billionaire. And I remember when I was a young man and he told me how much he loved me and appreciate me as a young man. And one day I was in his office and we were just chatting and he said, and it has never, ever left me. Never up to this day. So I don't know if the word is haunt or blesses. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you something. He said to me, Lord, bless Mike like you bless me. <laughs> He's a billionaire. And in his, in his speech, in his putting that on me, I had to go home and decide which area of the blessing I want to receive. I'll tell you another one. One of my bishops, he was going on to another island and I got on the flight. He says, Bishop, I'll go with you and I'll, I'll carry your bag. And while we were quite a few thousand feet up in the air, he was sat next to me and he leaned over and he hugged me. And those of you who know the man will hear his voice when I say, the man hugged me and he said, Lord, give this young man a double portion of my anointing. <laughs> if you know who that man is I, I promise you that's what he said and, and he had 120 men that he ordained so it says I'm going to ordain 240 men I've always had that in my spirit but he died of cancer what am I saying I've been through some horrible experiences that I don't dare want any of you to go through. I don't dare. Don't be like me. I don't wish none of you were like me. None of you. I don't wish it. None of you. I wish there are things that are a part of me that you would adopt or appreciate or add to your character. That would be fine. But I don't wish none of you to be like me. As a matter of fact, I will even tell you, do you think that it is easy for Her Excellency Jeannie Steele to be my wife? Your Excellency Jeannie Steele, First Lady, please unmute yourself, my queen. Yes, please. My darling. Yes. Is it easy and joyful and happy being my wife, my darling, all the time? Uh, you want me to be honest? You have to, you have to see, I don't expect you will ever tell lies in the class of speed because then you'll be wasting the experiences that we have. No, I'm just joking. No, it isn't. It's not always easy. But it's, it's quite joyful, though. Your Excellency, you're always falling back on the nice things to make people think that, that I am an easy person to live with and I'm so uh, amazing and all that. I just, but I just said no. I said no. It isn't always easy, but it is joyful. Mm. 
Let's see. I want to ask you a question. Would if God told you I was the person that you were going to marry and you had known me as good as you know me now, would you still marry me and go on this journey? If I knew you as good as I know you now, yeah, yes, I would. You would. <laughs> so that's a, that's a surprise. <laughs> I feel the same way too, boo. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. boo, I will make you the first and not the fourth. <laughs> well, so I guess we have to take the journey this way. So Thank you, you just so have much. to be grateful. Thank you, darling. What, I, what I'm sharing with you, what we're sharing with you, your journey is not going to always be the way you want it to be. It's not going to be beautiful, but your outlook, your opinion of it is what makes the difference. Look at the spells you are casting. I remain first lady. You told me I will never be ashamed one day of my life. I can't let her repeat what I told her to repeat that she knows by heart because it might get me in trouble with some very powerful people when they realize that's why she's the way she is. So I would not allow her to say it. But what I will say to you, choose those things that you're going to speak in this week carefully. And choose those things that you allow people to pin on you carefully. Your Excellency Doreen Burunji, please. I want you to, to give me your, your take because I am mentoring you specifically for takeover. So please, what is your take, Your Excellency Doreen Burunji? I'm going to close shortly. Your Your Excellency, during press on mute. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. My take on this is that um, yes, it's uh, it's unmuted, Your Excellency. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Today is that. <laughs> There is a lot of work to do on me, <laughs> and uh, I back my memory lane, and I've been I've realized there are so many people that I, I need to cross, not to have them in my life again spells negative spells negative spells on what i do on my life i have not taken to heart but i don't want to and also being very care very careful on what actually comes out what I speak out to my really being attentive. And I'm looking forward to more lessons about past spells on people you don't no, don't don't worry. I I'm not Thank hearing you. you. We're not hearing you. Did did you guys hear her? Okay or no? No. Okay, we're not hearing you proper, Doreen. But th to be quite honest, Zoom technicians are having fun behind the scenes with what we do. I'm a very technical person, and and I and I can get very annoyed sometimes with with what is happening. But let's leave that alone for now. I'm going to close this evening's class and I'm going to, 
I'm going to say to, to the Zoom technicians that are dealing with these classes, I, I really want you to look at, at the resources you lay to us working with those in Africa, because you, you, you have been serving me well and, and you're making a lot of positive changes, but you need to consider how you are dealing with those in Africa. Otherwise we will change the platform that we are using. I don't like how this is happening constantly when certain regions and people are speaking, you're not allowing them the privilege of the bandwidth and you're hindering them. And I, and I want to ask the technicians of Zoom to, uh, to address it. And this is a public announcement for you guys that will see it, address it because you're taking advantage in your own diplomatic way of those people in those regions and it is unacceptable. So please, I, I, I don't want to be seeing these kind of interruptions in my classes when we are dealing with those people in the African communities and the diaspora. Please address it, please. I'm His Excellency Dr. Michael Steele, and I want to thank those in Zoom for giving us this opportunity to be quite honest with being able to share with those in the diasporas and globally I want to thank you in the regions. I want to thank my COO, Her Excellency Doreen Burunji, my Chief of Protocol, His Excellency Dr. Donald Ewers, uh, Dr. Charles, and all of those who have been in the class this evening. Reverend Stephen Abu, I thank you so very much for being here. Your Excellency Zanis and Maka Curry, thank you so very much for your contribution, your, su your support, and your, your continued work in building the class of Steel Legacy. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency Zanis and Maka Curry. Adiola, thank you so very much, Your Excellency. And to my companion and best friend, First Lady, Her Excellency Jeannie Steele, thank you so very much for putting these classes together and making us get to the next level safely. Thank you so very much for being here in class this evening. I'm Dr. Michael Steele. Good evening and God bless you. Bye for now, guys. Your Excellency, Dr. Ewers, I'm going to call you um, as soon as this class is finished, I'll be calling your Excellency, Dr. Ewers.